We're like 26 hours from the start of the draft. I'm pumped. I love it. I like the pick. I like the player. <laughs> I do like the chime. I like the... Uh, well, the chime is good. And I... <laughs> I also like the uh, the highlights and the instant breakdown, and uh, you know I, I think it was a reach, Jim. Did, did, who did that, by the way? Like that, there are royalties on that. Who did the little ding 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 ding? ding, ding? Like that guy's a billionaire. You ever you ever meet any of those people? Because some of them live in the Bay Area. Like the people who came up with the little thingamabob, and they're like a bajillionaire. Like, like which I, one? Well, anything, anything like that. I uh, and I uh, try not to do the drop because I don't really know the guy. But like, uh, let's put it this way: my son's sort of acquaintance at, at, at high school, his dad. So we've like come in contact with each other. Thank yeah, there, you. All right, there it is. He made the little. Uh, I mean, it's gone now because Elon Musk took it over and now calls it X. But the little bird, the little bird, that one on Twitter. The little birdie? That, yeah, that one? Yeah, he made that. Oh, he I, did. I don't know what else he does in life, but he got real estate in the Bay Area because he made the little thing of a bob. Yeah, wow. I want to know who did the ding, 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 ding. Who did that? I'd love to know. Yeah? Yeah. My guess would be John Tesh. <laughs> he seems to have his it hands does, in all that stuff, it right? Does seem, it does Very seem Tesh like and... something that, uh, that he would do. Uh, Trey Hendrickson, defensive end. Cincinnati Bengals, three-time pro bowler, has requested a trade. The defensive end is due to make $15 million this season. He would like some long-term security and is in search of more than Cincinnati is, is willing to offer. You know, the Bengals are an interesting sort of case study because they got all these dudes Fantasy football loves them some Bengals. And there there is a little bit of a low-key comp between the Bengals and the 49ers. It's a team that feels like it's in a window. It's a team that went to the Super Bowl and lost, but has not been able to get over the top. And now it's time to pay the piper. Look at who they're dealing with all at once. Jamar Chase, option picked up. Joe Burrow, $55 million. T. Higgins, we're going to franchise tag you. Trey Hendrickson's like, where's mine? Right. Well, we can't give it to you. Well, then trade me. This is what happens. And the 49ers are just like they're just at the start of the maze that you have to go through. And I don't know if the Bengals will placate Hendrickson. I don't know if they'll deal him um, or if he'll sit out or, or whatever is going to happen next. But, yeah, you end up with disgruntled people in, in your company. And Brandon Ayuk is one of them right now. Yeah. And you have to start picking and choosing and, and, and moving deck chairs around. And so that's why we're sort of asking the question that we're asking today, because it's very likely that it, it, it's going to come down to, to something like this. And that is uh, you either trade Brandon Ayuk or you prepare to move on from Debo Samuel next year or you prepare to move on from George Kittle next year or you mess around with Purdy's deal. Now, there's other things that you can do. Uh, Trent Williams has a big number. Kyle Juszczyk, less so. Christian McCaffrey has a big I think number. I Juszczyk just uh, did a, one of those well, rework deals. He's also a fullback, so that's not enough money, I'd argue. Like, right, you can he move agreed on from to take him. less. But... Yeah, but you move on from him, and it doesn't clear enough right. to do what it's you like need to do. It's like throwing Moses Moody in a trade. Yeah, It's yeah. an add-on piece. So, you, like, we get it. you got to look at, at the money and, and sort of the who you want to keep. But then you also got to look at the ramifications for letting said player go. And I do think that's the only thing in favor of the idea of a Brandon trade. The only thing that's in favor of a Brandon trade is that um, there's not some huge cash, there's not some huge like dead cap number that you that that you're dealing with, which you might be dealing with with some of these other players, and you could get. Uh, a premium return. And I understand that. But I also, I look at it from the opposite view. You're like, because I've heard so many people say this. Chasky said it this morning. You've said it a few times. Yeah. Do the IU thing because you can get something for him. And I'm like, why do you think you can get something for him? Because he's a good little player. Because <laughs> he's super desirable right now. So 
I look at that as, yes, they'll give you something for him because he's really good and he's really young. So keep him. Keep him. Yeah. This is football. Players like Debo Samuel, to me, are terrifying to watch play because they do not stay healthy. He has not stayed healthy, and he will not stay healthy going forward. And if so, if you're going to mess around with one of those numbers, that's the guy I'm going to mess around with. If the number is too rich for your blood, though, then you go ahead and uh, and you figure out something else to do. And that's a choice that you have to make. And, you know, you, you paid Bosa a boatload, and then you restructured George, and you restructured Trent. And now if you go out there and you pay Brandon Ayuk as much as he is allegedly commanding or asking for, then you're in a spot where, yeah, you're right, next offseason – Hard choices will have to be made, and it does feel like if you did that, you'd be putting all your eggs in the basket of this upcoming year, saying that it is Super Bowl or busted up. Not Super Bowl or bust, like this whole thing falls apart, but it's Super Bowl or someone's going to have to go, and that's a choice that is going to have to be made either now or then, and if you make it now, you at least get something back. If you do what you're suggesting, you sign Brandon, you get to the offseason, and win or lose a Super Bowl, it doesn't really matter, but you're going to have to cut Debo Samuel, and you get no compensation at that point. Right, but you have Brandon Ayuk and and another year of Debo still. Um, you know, the, the, there's no way to lose that. The, this portion of the argument is an absolute win for the signed Brandon Club, which is if that you would like to be at your absolute best next year, that's the way to play it. That's the way to play it. And it doesn't mean Super Bowl or bust. You can't say that because of I can. you can get an additional draft pick and get an additional player to help you this year that makes your team better. There is absolutely... You're just looking at the one position. Yes! And David Lombardi weighed in yesterday on what you could do to get better with or without Brandon Ayuk. Right, and then had no answer for what you would do with Ayuk. He was talking about strengthening, strengthening another portion of the offense, which, by the way... Nothing prevents you from doing that anyway, even if you sign Brandon Ayuk. But there is no answer, literally no answer, for the 49ers wide receiver one job. Yeah, the, you no draft answer. a guy who, who takes that job. I mean, we, and we, 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 did, went, this we did this yesterday. We did this and yesterday. we went through all the rookies who had not, big years. Uh, no, no we didn't. A bunch of rookies we, had big years no, last year. No, no, almost yes. none of them did starting right away. None of them had 1,300 plus yards. None of them. Puka were... Nakua set the rookie record for receptions. Right. That's, and he was their one. That, is, first of all, he was not drafted to be their one. Well, he turned out to be their because, one. Cause, because cause Cooper Coop Coop got hurt. hurt. Yes. Right. So, and he was a sixth round draft pick. So that's a completely different. It doesn't matter when you take them if no, they're good. Of course good. it does. That's a scenario. Brock Purdy, the Buck Purdy story tells us that. Exactly. And everyone has called that luck. So I'm going to say the same thing about Puka Nakua. If they thought he was going to be that good, they'd have taken him in the first round. They had a six-round grade on him, yeah. Mark. I like the pick. <laughs> yeah. I remember saying that. Me too. I made a lot of money on Puka yeah, freaking the cool, okay? So I got nothing against the guy. Last time I do that fantasy but, league. But, but like, you're, you're sitting here telling me, like, that story's repeatable. And it's not. That's, like, an unbelievable story. Brock Purdy, Puka Nakua. That never happens. It literally just happened twice. Right. So, like... You can't just go repeat that. That can't be your plan. Nobody is sitting around in their war room right now going, all right, here's a plan for tomorrow. Let's go out there. Let's mess Thursday up. Friday, not that interested. But on Saturday, we're going to find a diamond in the rough. He's going to be amazeballs right away, and we're going we're gonna to show up the league. You can't go out. With, that's not a plan. Well, the plan, is, the plan is to trade Brandon Ayuk and get draft compensation and use one of those picks on a wide receiver like Adonai Mitchell uh, out of just, Texas. Uh, Ran a 4-3-4 four, four at the Combine. All right, here's the bet I'll make. He's got size, he's got speed, and oh, he can beat the press. Here's the bet I'll make. Talk to me. There is absolutely no rookie receiver this year who will match the numbers that Brandon put up last year. Period. Yeah. I'll make numbers? that bet right now. Catches, yards, touchdowns? Yards, what are we talking about? Yards, whatever. You might try and get me with one of these advanced analytics. No, I'm not going to go advanced analytics on you. I'm going to tell you that the production that came from Brandon Ayuk will not be matched by any rookie this year. 
And it's crazy to me. You're going to give me examples of like one, two, three, or four. Marvin Harrison Jr. I you mean, tell Mike, me he's not going to go for 1,300 yards? Like I could sit here and give you a bucket that is like 95% of the league of all the rookie receivers who don't do that in their first year. And you're going to give me guys who ended up being good, but literally next to none of them were good starting week one. Justin Jefferson, stop. I freaking dropped the guy off of a fantasy league in week eight because he wasn't doing that much. You could tell he was going to be good. I'm like, well, I'm not here for going to be good. We're playing this league right now. So I don't want to hear about their even their numbers at the end of the year. You gave me Rasheed Rice yesterday. It took him half a year to even flirt with being the Chiefs' number one receiver. Puka Nakua went 10 for 119 Again, in the opener. already addressed. Sixth rounder, not someone you were planning to have good, and the number one got hurt. But the guy went you, off. You're, you're saying that rookies can't come in and do well in week no, one, and Dibs, I'm giving you an I'm, example of a guy who did just that. Great. Okay, so we're going to play that game. You're going to get When I say that's not something you can plan on, you don't get to give me one example in the history of life like, we can all do that. 15 for 147 probably, week two. There was probably a you. cow that had two heads once upon a time. But I ain't planning for the next cow to come out with two heads. You know, there's humans that sometimes have two heads. <laughs> yes, there are. Yeah. Some of them actually have two bodies and they're conjoined. Right. Yeah, it's crazy conjoined stuff. twins. Crazy stuff happens. You're not looking for but a conjoined I ain't twin. On. Yes, you are. It's not that much of a, you of don't a miracle. Know that. You don't just know looking that. looking for somebody to come in and get 75 grabs. I mean... Find his way to 1,300 yards, I'm, ho-hum. I'm literally triggered by this idea that you could just go find Ayuk tomorrow night. I got a list from Mike Silver <laughs> of eight guys who you could plug and or play. <laughs> oh, God. It's just, I don't, I don't find it to be. I remember uh, sitting with buddies. I was sitting with a buddy at a youth sports game, and we pulled out the phone, and the Niners had just played a preseason game. And you'll all remember the play I'm about to tell you about. You're all going to remember. Remember when Trey Lance hit Danny Gray down the left sideline? Oh, yeah, I can see it now. There's a go route. Oh, it was a preseason game. Two words, Mark. Arm talent. And a lot of you Niner fans, you looked at that play, and there might have been something inappropriate happening to your body. See at, it. At minimum, there were tingles. Oh, some blood flow. You thought. Possibly. Oh, <laughs> you're like, oh. The next era of 49er football is here. Bust. Bust. I, I, I just, I can't sit here and tell you with 100% certainty that there's no such thing as a good wide receiver rookie. But Dibs, acknowledge that you're talking about Johnny Cueto getting a hit. You're talking about something that is not that rare. Wildly, um, absolutely that rare. If you scout correctly, and I think the Niners have done a good job of late, and if you identify talent, you can find a guy who can come in and contribute and be good. He doesn't have to be amaze balls, Puka Nakua. Yes, he does. Rashi Rice scored a touchdown in week one. Yes, he does. He, had, he went five for 59 in the week 49ers three. The 49ers need a number one wide receiver. They need one. Brock Purdy needs one. They have a whole host of guys that they just recently drafted that can take the spot in the meantime while, let me get my list you're here, literally Ricky hitting, Pearsall is ready to go. You're literally hitting me with, it's okay, trade Ayuk, let's go Ronnie Bell. You're literally oh, getting, Gray. You're giving me that opinion? You've got Juwan Jennings. You've got Chris Conley. Jawan Jennings. You got Trent Taylor Jawan back finally. Jawan Jennings is going to need a golf cart to get how far down the field Brandon can get. Like, he's a phenomenal player for what he does. He don't do that. Well, then what do we do in drafting wide receivers if we're not going to give a kid a chance? <laughs> That's all I'm saying, Mark. All I am saying is give these kids a damn chance. It's risky, I don't but want, you've got you've I got depth at wide receiver. I don't want to give kids a chance. I want to win a Super Bowl. You are not going to sit here and do this. I like today. Xavier Leggett or Leggett. <laughs> I, it's unconfirmed the pronunciation. You, you may not. He's got some upside. Ronnie Bell and Danny Gray. What are we it's a camp doing? Camp battle, Mark. It's camp battle for the, the wide receiver the, one. The league is salivating. It's salivation sensation. They are salivating over these players. The Eagles have paid two of them. The Seahawks broke off DK. 
The Dolphins gave Tyreek 30. People lost their minds about the deal, and the Lions just surpassed it today for Amon Ross St. Brown, who, by the way, Lucas Who's was better than IU. Who was drafted? Yes, he is. Drafted in the what? What round? Amon Ra will always list all the receivers who went ahead of him. There's another one. Fourth round. Best receiver in the draft. Yet all these expert NFL evaluators had 17 guys in front of him. I'm not playing this game. I don't understand why you do it. I'm the, like, I know what it sounds like. Willard thinks Brandon Ayuk is Jerry Rice. No, I think he's Brandon Ayuk. Yeah. And you don't know what any of these other people are. Well, All then you know what, Mark? Just skip the draft. No, Just skip that's, the whole that's damn not, thing. That's of course not what I'm saying. But you guys would like to play chicken at the... You want to be the Giants' bullpen catcher with the Niners' number one wide receiver position. Just close your eyes, let the ball, the ball, huck a ball at you, and let's hope you catch it. Let's hope. I'm sure it'll be fine. What could go wrong? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, what could go wrong? I mean, and I mean, you, you look at a list of wide receivers who are coming out in the draft, and a lot of these guys have great pedigree, and you'll be able to save some money and give a guy a look, and if it doesn't work, you've already got six other receivers on your you, team. You're having a you full... pop them in there. You're having a full Mavs and Five show today. I can see it behind your eyes. Nah, you're Mavs and Five. Are you talking you about are, Steiny? You are so Mavs and Five right now. It's unbelievable. You do not believe what I'm you're telling me. I'm not just going to sit here and do sit on my hands radio <laughs> with the draft coming up here in 24, 25 and change hours. Oh Take a swing. You're not going to pay Brandon Ayuk what he wants anyway. So let's just have this drag out all summer because he wants not? more money than you're going to want to pay him. Who Justin doesn't? Jefferson Who is going to jack the market. CeeDee Lamb's going to jack the market. Didn't and you? Brandon Ayuk's going to sit here and go, you know what? I want 75 did, guaranteed Didn't now. you just get a new deal last year? Oh, that's none of your business. No, I didn't reset my, actually, the market. It is my business. <laughs> You're my partner. Yeah, exactly. What was that? That was in September, do yeah. You, do you think Odyssey wanted to pay you every dollar that they're paying you? Uh, based on the way that went, probably. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what I didn't do. Nobody wants to pay anybody anything. They didn't shop me like they were going to trade me because uh, I was not trying to come in and be all Brandon Ayuk with it. Not tradable. It was very not reasonable. Tradable. Yeah. Brandon I mean, Ayuk is tradable, and if the right compensation comes in, if you get a high second, I mean, and you can maybe get your hooks into Brian Thomas Jr. <laughs> pulls checks a, list, pulls a piece of paper That's up great. to read. This is my who bit. you want. And uh, if you give me, I like a Donnie five. Mitchell. Yeah, I know you do. He flashes foot quickness needed to beat the NFL hey, press. Dibs, look at me, Malachi Corley, big thighs. Big thighs. Western Kentucky. That was your guy from yesterday. Yeah, that's your Debo replacement yeah. next year. Unless it doesn't work out. Then you got time to figure out something right. else. You might not even have to trade up to get my guy, Troy oh. Franklin. Oh, he's 31st good. overall. Is he like a duck? Duck? Oh, yeah. Of course he is. Oh, he doesn't yeah. talk about anything. He made Bo mm -hmm. When uh When Grandy <laughs> and Sterling and E-Dog are in here tomorrow doing the draft, Grandy's only going to talk when ducks get picked. So funny. Talking yeah. about how centers are the biggest hit yeah. rate. Yeah. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, center out of Oregon. He's going to be the star of the draft. Book it. What's he? What's his grade? When's he going to go? Uh, probably in the teens. In the teens. Okay. Yeah. Calling an offensive lineman the star of the draft. I mean, so how good he is. Penny Sewell got a new deal today. To if we can just Lions, mm -hmm. Lions circle back people. to your, your cockamamie stat that you retweeted from Adam Schefter. Trey Hendrickson, who... Uh, he wants to be traded. Yes. He got a second contract, but not from his own team. So is he considered a miss because he's a three-time pro course bowler? Of course not. We already went over that. But I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm taking off example after example why that stat is meaningless. No, you're ticking off outlier after outlier. You're weaponizing it against you're, my wide receivers. You, I mean, you like you're sitting here, and uh, how many times in a row are you going to say Rasheed Rice, which A, is not a good example of what I'm talking about, and B, is an outlier. They're outliers. That draft you just went through. You're like, okay, let's go through it. Who are the wide receivers? Okay, number one, Henry Ruggs. He's in jail. Sweet. Next, Jerry Judy. He just got absolutely thrown out the door in Denver. Those are your first two. Freaking SEC, Alabama, can't miss, physical freak, wide receivers. Let's get them. What do you got? Dumped and jail. Like... 
I, I just gave you these numbers. The flaw in the number is there, but it doesn't debunk the entire list. Wide receiver in the first round is the hardest thing to evaluate of any position in the league. That's why you don't take one in the first round. <laughs> and you're using number th- you're not using right. number 31 on on Grandy's quaint little duck. You're going to get an offensive lineman that you can plug in either now or in the immediate future because you need help on the right side of your offensive Maybe. line. They might trade Maybe well. you're going to get a corner. They've only got 22 guys that got a first round grade. And if they're all gone, maybe they'll just leave. How many of those guys are wide receivers? I would wonder. Or do they not look um, at wide receivers because they've no, got they look the, at, they've they look got at their everybody. two guys? They look at everybody. Exactly. They have and to if, be ready. They're not doing their job if they're not ready. And if they're sitting there at thirty-one, how many are first-round grades? Probably at least three, three or four. Probably, three, probably yeah. more. And yeah. if you're sitting there at thirty-one and one of your guys is available, then you pick up the phone and you say, you know what? Those dudes aren't going to be available. They might might be be. available. Roma Dunze is not going to be available at number 31. Right, but they may have a guy further down the draft who they gave a first-round grade to. That's not even my point. My point is is that we can sit there and give them a first-round grade, and they might, high good chance, be wrong. Right. My point is you don't need to use first-round draft capital on a wide receiver to replace Brandon Ayuk. You just draft a guy who's good. Of course you can do that, but you're not going to know that, and most guys, if not almost all, Fine, Puka Nakua. Outside of that, Mm -hmm. like there's a reason he broke every record. Why did he break every record? Because he was really good. Because nobody does that. Nobody does what he did. Like literally nobody does that. It's never happened in the history of the league, and you want the Niners to just walk out there this weekend and replicate it. No problem. Just go do something that's never been done before. Jordan Addison came in last year and immediately was good. He's fine. He's not uh, immediately good. He Tank was a- Dell had a very good rookie year. He did. Listed as Nathaniel here, and that confused me momentarily. <laughs> I'll be honest. He's, Third- also, he's also got a torn ACL. Third rounder, but he had a great year until the old ACL gave yeah, out. So okay. As a rookie. Did an okay year. Yeah. I mean, I didn't say they're not allowed to play, but you can't count on them to be WR1. By the way, the two guys you just mentioned, neither of them were ones. Jordan Addison was playing next to Justin Jefferson until he got hurt. And Houston's number one is named Nico Collins. You're asking someone to come in and replicate your top target. For a team that passes the ball the fewest amount of times in the National Football League. Yet still very much needs to pass it. Yes, yeah, some. Like very, very, very they much They ran it more than it. they passed it. One of three teams to do that last year. So barely, it's not. Barely. What? 50, still, 52% of the time. It's something like that. Yeah. But, you know, facts are facts. I hate to stand behind the stats right, all right. the time. Even though they don't tell the story. That's what I'm into. Well, the story is they're a run-first team. And the story is that in today's NFL, you better have a freaking good wide receiver. That's why everyone's paying $30 million for it. Or have an we're, elite tight end and a running back who can catch we're it. We're all in love with our running back, right? The league thinks he's half as good as a great wide receiver. Well, he is half a wide receiver, at least. Well, why as is much he o- as he gets thrown Why to is it? he only getting $16 million? That's Sounds- a pre-existing deal. Well, he's no- not a wide receiver. Nobody's gone by it. Right. R- running backs just get cut. It's like, yeah, I see ya. Why? Because you're a lot more replaceable. And you're a lot more likely to get hurt. And he's got an injury history. You know who's more likely to get hurt? Don't say it. Debo Samuel. Oh, I can't believe you just put that on him. That's bad juju. It's not likely. It's just a historical fact. Juju also had a good rookie year. <laughs> He was all right. I'll have to look it up. Well, yeah, he was like WR3. Yeah. Uh, he's well, no... Uh, okay. He's no-